Hi guys, it's Simulsi here, so welcome to another speed build. So today I am building another family home, and this time it's a base game only family house. And I've been so excited to share this one because I think this is probably my favorite base game house I've ever done. If it's not, it's a very close second. Probably with the last one that I built on this lot, I really love building here in Willow Creek on this particular lot like the lighting is perfect so it's really fun to build here and I thought the shape of this lot would be perfect for this build that I wanted to do because I was really inspired by a picture I saw on Pinterest for some reason as soon as I saw it I was like I should build that using only base game items which is kind of strange because I don't normally get like a desire to build base game builds, but I all of a sudden got the urge to. So this is what I came up with and I honestly love it. So hopefully you guys are going to like it too, but I will put a picture of it here on screen. The house that I was looking at originally from Pinterest. So you guys can see what I was going off of. The front of it looks very similar. I was pretty much copying the shape of it almost identically, um, but the back of the house I made up and the landscaping I didn't really look at and I didn't try to find any floor plans. I think it was a painting. I'm not looking at the picture right now, so I can't exactly remember. It's been about a week or so since I built this. So, you know, I can't remember exactly if it was a real house or a painting because I look at actually a lot of artwork as references and I find them really inspiring. So that's something I would recommend if you're struggling with looking at real houses, maybe try looking at artwork of houses, especially like cartoon artwork like for some reason sometimes it's so so inspiring um but the reason i think i was first drawn to this house was that it was a tudor style kind of cottage house and i've never built anything like that with base game and all of our timber framed wallpaper i think all came with get together so i was thinking maybe you guys aren't interested in the get together pack and you would want to be able to create a cottagey sort of tudor style house with using only base game items and so i thought it'd be kind of a fun challenge and we have this one wallpaper that i think passes off as a timber framed wallpaper and i used it here on the exterior i think pretty much only on the top half of the house and i think it looks so good i mean it's not like i don't think it's necessarily supposed to be an exterior wallpaper but i think it works and i think it actually pairs nicely with the brick that i used i used this red brick that i think is really nice and then this also um this white brick that we had that we got really recently, but it's also a base game one. And I loved the garage. I was able to make it on a different level than the rest of the house. And I think this actually looks really good. And of course I go into the live edit objects to pull out some cars to put in the driveway because I thought that would be a really nice detail. I really utilized <laughs> the live edit objects and the debug menu as I normally do, but especially for this build because I wanted it to be fully decorated as I wasn't going to have the rest of the packs to be able to add a bunch of decor and I don't know just extra clutter and stuff so I found that really useful as I pretty much always do whether or not it is base game or not um, something I did include in the garage though is an item from um, seasons I believe but I didn't realize it as I was building it but once I went to go take the screenshots I was like oh yeah that's a seasons item so I needed to delete it um, I will point it out when we get onto the garage it's not that big of a deal and you'll see it in the screenshots without it so it's, it's one item, it's not that big of a deal, but I did delete it, so it will be uploaded to the gallery as only base game. Um, but yeah, so I decided that this house would be for, I think it's three Sims. Um, I have my screenshots open right here so I can check the bedrooms. Um, I did a parent's bedroom. Oh no, it's four Sims. I did a parent's bedroom so you could have two parents in there. And then I also did a toddler's room and a kid's room. I wanted to be able to have a bigger family in here but I really didn't have as much space as I thought I was going to have. The second floor is pretty small, a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. So like the parents' bedroom is pretty cramped, but it definitely works. It's just pretty narrow, especially on the sides of the bed, but it totally works. And then the kids' room is a is kind of an interesting shape, but I think for a house like this, it might have some unique shaped rooms. Cause I feel like a house like this is pretty old and usually older houses, not always, um, but they tend to have more character and more unique floor plans and like shapes and stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then the toddler room is very simple. It's actually just like a little square room. <laughs> it's pretty small, but I think once the toddler um, gets a bit bigger and you want to fit a larger bed in there, I think you'll have plenty of space. Not a double bed, but if you wanted to have like a twin size bed in there, it'll work just fine. And then other than that, there is a small office space downstairs. Um, there's a dining room, a kitchen, a living room of course and then there's also a bathroom on the first floor and the second floor so there's two total and then the three bedrooms there's also like these 
uh, like mud room areas. There's two of them in this build because the floor plan was a bit complicated. As you can see, I'm working on it right now and the shape of the house is just a bit strange, but I think I made it work and I actually feel like it came together pretty quickly considering how oddly shaped the house is but there you can see I did place a double bed I was placing it for now just to see how much space I had to make sure that I had plenty of room and I did think about expanding the house a little bit but I liked the shape of it so much and I felt like the second floor or the first floor actually worked pretty nicely so I didn't want to change the shape of the house too much so I just decided to go with it it's a small bedroom but I think it totally works so I'm not too concerned about it um, but exterior wise I did build a sandbox which I thought was really fun because um, I haven't done one in a while I don't think and then I also did a swimming pool with a couple of lounge chairs there's also an outdoor dining table with a barbecue there's a gardening area there's some monkey bars and then of course the garage like I mentioned and I did put some activities in the garage I, I set up this little work table to look like the flower arranging table I mean it, it doesn't look like it exactly but I wanted it to feel like maybe if you don't have seasons and you don't have the flower arranging table it kind of feels like you have one in some way but I also put the woodworking table in there the trash cans and some debug clutter and then of course that object from seasons that I do delete <laughs> um, so yeah anyways here I am moving on to the landscaping I absolutely loved the landscaping in this build it was probably my favorite part of the whole thing like the exterior of this house is like one of my favorites base game or not it was so much fun and I think that's because like I said, most of the plants that we have in game are base game, especially in the live edit objects. Like there's a ton of options in there. And I just love the live edit objects plants. I know I've been using them like crazy ever since we got access to that menu, but I just can't help myself. <laughs> they look so good and like realistic in some way because I feel like the textures and like colors are just richer and more alive like they don't look so manicured and plasticky i actually really like the cartoony style of the sims 4 so i don't want things to look overly realistic but i do like how these plants just look a tad bit more realistic without like um looking different than the art style of the game so hopefully that makes sense but i love them and i'm obsessed and i think they really make this build especially like some of the trees and i tried to not add too many different plants like i tend to do this in most of my landscaping I think I use like a handful of flowers and then like two or three bushes and then the same trees like maybe a couple of those so it's not like a huge variety and I just place them over and over and try to not make it look too repetitive or too um yeah too repetitive I think is the best way to describe it so just trying to make it look natural <laughs> and kind of organic I guess um so yeah i just had a lot of fun with it and there i just put some hanging baskets on the back porch the back porch ended up being really small i ended up not really being able to fit anything back there i was hoping to be able to put like an outdoor dining table or a chess table and i really just didn't have the space so i think i ended up putting some decorative planters back there just some like yeah just some plant decorations but here you can see i'm moving on to the backyard i ended up going with this fence that we got in an update about the time get famous was released i really like this fence unfortunately most of the swatches don't have a matching gate the gate that i'm using is a base game one that i think we had originally i'm not sure if the swatch that i'm using was there originally because it actually matches this particular swatch of the fence really well and I didn't notice it before maybe I've used it and forgot about it but when I found it this time I was like oh my god I've never noticed this fence before or this gate before and it matches the fence perfectly um, but there's still some other swatches that we don't have like a perfect match for so hopefully we'll get an update at some point and we'll get more matching swatches but these ones actually worked really well and I think it fenced in the yard perfectly uh, but speaking of updates I'm sure we'll be getting an update sooner than later i'm not exactly sure when but i am excited for new content we just got the last round of voting for the pack name and icon for the knitting stuff i'm hoping that it's going to be called knitting stuff because i didn't really like the other names let me know if you guys liked the other names maybe i'll put a poll up on my community tab because i'm kind of curious your guys's opinions and as for the pack icons i don't think i really like any of them i don't know I feel like they're okay, but they look kind of strange. Molly, the English swimmer, actually pointed out that most of the balls of yarn look like volleyballs, and I totally agree. So I'm not sure if those are like the final options or if they'll, I mean, actually, I assume they probably are because they already put out the poll. So I don't know if they would change it, but let me know if you guys had any of them that you liked. Um, I think they're okay. I mean, I don't hate them, but I do think that maybe we could have had a different design possibly, but 
Either way, I am so excited for this pack. I can't wait. I wish I knew exactly when it was coming out because I just, I don't know, I want to count the days. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to have like just crafting clutter in the game. Like we already have kind of some crafting clutter, but oh, I just, I can't wait. I'm so excited and I love laundry day so much. It's my favorite stuff pack and this is going to be another community voted stuff pack. So I'm like, I have pretty high expectations. So especially for it being like a crafting pack and it coming with a rocking chair, that's gonna be so adorable. I can't wait to have rocking chairs and place them on my porches. It's gonna be like the best time ever, which is so silly to say, but it totally is. Um, but yeah, I'm also really looking forward to seeing what else is going to be coming this year, what we're going to be getting as far as game packs and expansion packs. I really have no idea. Do you guys have anything that you really wanna see or suspicions? I assume we'll probably get cars. I know that's a pretty like wanted thing. A lot of people are wanting cars and some people say we'll never get them because we don't have like um, open worlds or proper driveways or you know, things like that. But I think we could definitely get cars. Um, it's not really something that I like, want really bad but i think it would be pretty cool especially if we had more garage items or even if just a car appeared at the front of the house and the sim walked up to it and like kind of disappeared into it <laughs> and then you appeared where you were traveling to rather than i don't know it, it seems like they're kind of just flying wherever they go which doesn't i don't think it's totally realistic and doesn't really make that much sense to me so i think it'd be pretty nice but um, yeah, I'm just really excited to see what will be coming. I was going through some of the questions that you guys were asking me and a lot of you were asking me, cause in case you guys missed it, when I did my Spanish mission build, I did do a Q and A since that video was so long. So if you wanna see it, um, I answered a lot of questions. I still have a ton more that I didn't answer. So I was reading through them and a lot of you guys were asking um, what I think the packs are going to be. And I really have no idea, no idea because they did give us a roadmap for like the next six months. I forget exactly what they said was going to be coming. Was it like one expansion, one game pack, and a stuff pack, which is probably the community stuff pack? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I really have no idea, but I'm excited to see what it's going to be because I feel like I'm ready for a new pack, especially right now. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But anyways, I have pretty much finished the landscaping. Like I said, I love the landscaping so much i think it's very pretty and it's one of my favorites and i'm just totally obsessed but here i'm just adding some lights and decorations to the pool i add this barbecue i end up putting it over here because i really didn't have like a great place to put it and i wanted to put some lounge chairs next to the pool and i end up using these ones with these fun flamingo prints on them i thought the color was actually really nice and complimented like the brick in some way, it doesn't match the brick necessarily, but for me, when I placed it, it just felt like it tied in the build so nicely. And then here's an outdoor dining table. And then you will notice that I put some plants in the planter boxes. I forget if I took the screenshots with them already planted or not, but they will be planted when I upload it to the gallery. And then here you can see, I'm trying to place some objects on this back porch and it's just so small. <laughs> I did not have any space to place anything, so it's a bit disappointing, but it's still cute. I mean, you could probably put an art easel there if you wanted an activity, or um, I'm sure there's something you could place there, but it's still, it's still a nice back porch, even though I wasn't able to fit a chess table like I originally planned, or a dining table or something. Um, but here I'm moving on to the garage. So like I said, I have the um, trash cans in here. The green one is a non-functioning one from the live edit objects. I basically just wanted to place it to feel like a yard debris or a recycling bin or something. And then the one next to it is just the regular base game trash can that, yeah, it functions and it works. <laughs> um, um, but over here I am doing my little uh, flower arranging table, you could call it. I put some seed packets there and just some gardening clutter that I thought would look nice. And then I put a baseball bat in here. I always forget about this object, but I thought it was kind of a nice thing to have in a garage for some reason, because I wanted to have like that, just extra clutter that you might store in the garage. If I was using uh, Discover University, I would put a bicycle in here and I put the woodworking bench with some extra blocks of wood over here. And then here I am placing this room. This is a room I recently made um, using the tool mod and I will upload it to the gallery. I actually mentioned that I would upload it recently and I totally forgot. Um, but the yellow shovel that I placed next to the broom is the object that I used from Seasons. <laughs> so if you have Seasons, check my gallery page because I will be uploading that room and yeah, 
I used the tool mod to rotate it and to turn it upright so you could actually make it look like it was leaning against a wall and I thought that was really fun and yeah, unfortunately I wasn't thinking when placing it because I did have it filtered through base game items, but I don't think that necessarily works for rooms. It just shows all of the rooms that you have and you could still place whatever you want. So yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but um, I do delete it. So you won't see it in the screenshots, but either way here you can see I'm finally moving on to the interior of the house and I'm starting off by decorating the kitchen. I did have to switch out the window that I had in the front of the house because I couldn't place cabinets in front of it. I mean, I could have, but then they would be blocking it. And I really don't like to do that because then you would see the back of the counters through the window and you know, you wouldn't build your house like that. So I always try to avoid it whenever possible, but I love this kitchen. I actually had some extra space, as you can see to the right of the microwave. And I ended up creating a pantry, which I thought was really fun. And it was a nice way just to add some like extra storage and clutter. And I tried to not clutter up the countertops too much because of course I wanted this kitchen to be functional. And I put the teapot here and most of the clutter is right there by the teapot and surrounding it. And then the corner cabinet is pretty much empty. I did put a plant there, but it's tucked far close to the wall. So if you do that, then you can use the corner cabinet to do all of your mixing and chopping and your Sims should be able to cook everything that they need to. But here you can see I'm creating the pantry area. It's not functional. I don't think your Sims can open this door. If they can, I don't think there's really anything in here that they can grab, but maybe you guys can think of something that you could place in here and then you could actually have your Sim open the pantry. There's nothing I don't think that you could do that with. I don't know why I'm saying that, <laughs> but maybe there is and maybe I'm just not thinking of it, but I think it's so cute. I really enjoyed making it. I put some wine in there and just some extra coffee and bottles and things and yeah, just kind of random decorations. But over here, you can see I'm moving on to the living room. I of course had to place a fireplace in here because I put like three chimneys on the exterior. And so I only got one in here because the second floor ended up being kind of small. If I, if it was ideal, I would have put one in the parents' bedroom, but it's totally okay. And I wanted this build to feel like it was a bit traditional, but it still had modern elements to it. So I gave them a nicer TV, um, but it still has pretty traditional furniture. And I also wanted it to feel really lived in. So I ended up cluttering up the top of this fireplace with a ton of stuff. And I think it looks so good. I didn't really clutter up the coffee table too much. I think I only placed that book, that open one that we got in an update when we got the freelancer career. I'm not exactly sure when that update was, but it's been a while by now. So I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with that object, but. Yeah, I love that object. I want more things like it. And then over here, I do put a bookcase because I wanted it to feel like it was built into the house. I'm not really sure if it looks that way, but I wanted it to feel more of like a built-in. But I put some wooden uh, carved decorations up on those little shelves where you can place items. And I thought that was kind of nice, especially since I had the woodworking table in the garage. Maybe one of the parents is really into woodworking. Um, I thought that was a pretty good idea. I actually didn't really think too much about the parents or the kids necessarily um, like hobbies and jobs, I guess, but I did put an art easel in the office. So maybe one of them's an artist, maybe the same one that does the woodworking. Maybe they're just an all around like kind of crafty person. And then I'm not sure what the other one does, but as far as the kids room, so there's the toddler room and it's pretty much just like a generic toddler's room. It's pretty yellow, but it's so cute. I really loved it. And the kids room I think is really fun too. And I think it's a pretty generic kids room as well. I went kind of more on the blue side. It's very blue and white. It's very color coordinated, which I've been pretty obsessed with for kids rooms recently, but I used um, the dinosaur wallpaper and a few kind of like sciency related objects in there, but also some sports related things. So I think they're just kind of into whatever. They're just a kid who likes, you know, random kid things. Um, but here I'm decorating the entryway and the hallway leading to the stairs. Um, I put a few things in there, nothing too exciting. And then here is one of the mudroom areas that I was mentioning. I just put some cabinets just to kind of be like storage. You could definitely turn one of these into like a laundry space. I would probably turn the one closest to the back door into a laundry space, but it's just, yeah, it's just an extra space. <laughs> So I put another bookcase in here. The floor plan was pretty difficult. And then I also have this extra hallway leading it to the downstairs bathroom and the office space. I could have made it a bit more narrower and made the office space a little bit bigger by like three tiles. So you could definitely do that if you would want to. You could also expand the office space um, exterior wise, like you could pull it outwards. But I just liked the exterior of the house so much that I didn't want to change it. And it totally works. It's just a bit, it's a bit small for an office, but 
you know, there's a computer desk in here and it has everything that you need. There's the art easel, like I mentioned. I also have that bulletin board where I put some postcards. Um, but anyways, here you can see I'm moving on to the second floor, just copying over some flooring and then some wallpaper. The hallway leading to the bedrooms isn't that exciting. I just put some artwork and then also a wall mounted light. <laughs> Those are something that I was talking about when I was doing my friends inspired apartments because I realized when looking at pictures and like clips of that series, they use so many just wall lights, whatever you call those, just, um, yeah, throughout just different places in their apartments. And I realized that I don't really use those very much. So I've been trying to consciously use them a bit more. And I feel like they're actually a nice use of space whenever you don't really have artwork or something that you think really suits a certain area. I mean, I'm sure it won't always work, but recently I found it pretty helpful when I just kind of want to fill in some space without adding like a painting or something like that. So I've been pretty happy with it, but here you can see I'm decorating the parents' room. Like I said, it's very small, but it totally works. And I think it's actually kind of nice. And I think it suits this style of house. Like I don't think this house would necessarily have like giant bedrooms with like ensuite bathrooms. So I think it works, <laughs> but yeah. So since there isn't like a whole lot of room, there's only one bathroom up here. And I didn't realize when creating the floor plan that I didn't really have a great place to put the shower. <laughs> And so it's a bit weird and the shower's like right next to the windows, which I mean is probably okay because technically it is a bathtub and they've just put like a pipe for the shower head, but the pipe is like next to the window. And so maybe, maybe that's not where the water comes from. Maybe the water comes from the other pipe on the other side of the shower and that's connected to the wall and like the piping within the house. <laughs> And I don't know. I don't know why I'm trying to make it realistic or make it work, but it's just a bathroom and it totally works. You could have just a bathtub if it bothers you, but I wanted to have the option of taking a shower as well, especially since the downstairs bathroom was so small. Um, and also you could totally have a stand-up shower, but since I wanted to include a toddler in this build, it just made sense. <laughs> so um, anyways, here I'm moving on to the toddler's room. It's pretty small, but it totally works. And I think it ends up being really cute. I love this yellow wallpaper. Here I'm just placing a few toddler items that I kind of forgot. So I put a high chair in the kitchen and then a toddler potty in the bathroom. But in here I get this dresser that we got. Um, at some point we got an update where we got toddler items and I thought it worked really well because it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And then there quickly I did place a dollhouse in the sandbox. So I do decorate the sandbox later in case you're wondering why it's empty. I do go back and add, I think mostly just things to the sandbox. Maybe I add a few other decorations on the exterior too, but either way I have this bookcase over here and I put some decorations up on top of it. I size up some of these dolls that you can find in the debug menu. I think they're probably dolls that they pull out while playing with the different doll houses, but I just size them up and place them up there just to act as extra clutter, kids items. I've been doing that pretty, pretty recently with a lot of different like kids rooms and toddler rooms. And I think it's a nice way just to add extra decorations. And I decided to use this bunny because I used it recently in a build. <laughs> and I was like, I never used that bunny stuffed animal and it just worked with the color scheme in this bedroom. So I totally wanted to use it. And then here I'm just adding a few decorations here on the um, on the dresser. And yeah, that's it for the toddler's room. It's very cute, nice and simple, but I like it. And then over here, this is the crazy kid's room. <laughs> and crazy because of the floor plan. It's such a weird shape. I did think for a moment about um, blocking off a tiny portion of it and making another bathroom. So you could definitely do that. I think you'll see me start to do that here in just a second. Um, it's the part of the room that's on the far right if we're looking at it from the hallway. I thought about just taking that tiny little square at the end and yeah, you'll see me try to block it off here and I'm just gonna move the door and you know what? It wasn't worth it. The two bathrooms are totally fine. I think I was just still thinking how much the other bathroom was bothering me with the placement of the shower. <laughs> Maybe you guys can figure out a better floor plan for that bathroom or switch up the windows or something. I don't know. Either way, it's not that big of a deal. Um, here you can see I'm just cluttering up the desk space. I wanted a space for the kid to sit and do homework. Um, of course, if you wanted to add like a different activity, you totally could like maybe the science table or an arts and crafts table or something, but I really like including desks. So that's what I did. And then I also had this extra piece that popped out where the chimney is. So I just put a bookcase here. It's very close to the other wall. So there's kind of a gap 
behind it. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I wanted it to look like it was a bit bigger. I could have put like another bookcase behind it to fill in the gap. I decided not to because I didn't think it was totally necessary. So if the gap bothers you, you could definitely fill it in with like another bookcase and just try to hide the gap I guess <laughs> but anyways um here I'm just adding the final few decorations and we're already onto the screenshot so I hope you guys have enjoyed this build and yeah I hope you guys do enjoy the screenshot so thank you so much for watching and please leave any comments or suggestions you have and I'll talk to you guys soon bye sometimes it feels like I'm all alone Like you know the right way Sometimes you just don't